As Earth turns on its axis and the constellations appear to move across the heavens, there's more to the night sky than the stars, the planets and the moon. There are visitors that can shine brightly for weeks, nomads whose unpredictability makes them all the more exotic. We know them as comets. To understand comets, we return to the earliest solar system. At the hot center, heavier elements condensed, like metals and rocky silicates. The inner planets are rich in such elements. But farther out, where it's cold, through the gas giants and the Kuiper belt, lighter elements condensed. They formed ices of methane, water and ammonia, and still farther out, a shell of icy bodies called the Oort cloud envelops the solar system. It's from Oort and Kuiper that comets fall. Dislodged, perhaps, by the gravitational twitch of a neighboring star, a comet is drawn inwards by the tug of the sun. In the unaccustomed warmth, as ancient ices vaporize, they stream off as a great tail. Rounding the sun, the comet is now captured in a vast elliptical orbit. Time-lapse of a comet shows a tail fluorescing blue because of the ultraviolet of sunlight. Comets grow two tails. The blue is gas, the yellow, dust. The gas tail can disconnect if there's a gust in the solar wind. And then reattach. The tails disappear as a comet returns to the freezing outer reaches. But when displayed, the tails always point away from the sun. The blue gas tail is blown by the solar wind, electrically charged particles that stream from the sun. The tail can stretch 100 million kilometers from the comet's head. The broader and shorter dust tail is pushed outwards by the radiation pressure of sunlight. Dust from the tail litters the wake of a comet. When intersected by Earth, grains streak into the upper atmosphere and burn up. We see them as showers of meteors or shooting stars. It's impossible to watch comets near the sun, but blank it out and there they are. Here's one with a solar eruption. Some don't make it. Comets careen through the planets on random orbits. The sun is their master, but watch the red one. Because Jupiter has an influence too, the comet is locked into an ellipse by the two major bodies of the solar system. Here comes a sun plunger and a sun grazer. Comets come from all directions because they start in all directions. The Oort cloud is a far distant bubble around the planets. Jupiter's massive pulling power captured this comet, then tore it to pieces. Shattered into 20 or more fragments, the comet had passed within 30,000 kilometers of the mighty planet and paid the price. It was photographed in 1993 like a string of pearls. Named Shoemaker-Levy 9 after its discoverers, excitement mounted, for the comet was on a collision course with Jupiter. Sure enough, through a week in 1994, the fragments tore into the planet at 60 kilometers a second. They exploded in the soupy atmosphere at 10,000 degrees Celsius. From Earth, the impacts were out of sight. After each hit, astronomers had to wait until the planet's rotation brought the scar into view. In infrared, the fireball from an impact. For a few days, Jupiter had a battered face. The largest fragments were three kilometers wide, but pinpricks to this gas giant. 
Had they hit Earth, it would have been catastrophic. And comets do hit us, the last one over Siberia in 1908. Exploding in the atmosphere, uninhabited forest was flattened. The likely cause, a comet fragment. Were this a city, millions would have died. Halley is the most famous comet, captured by Jupiter into a short period orbit 200,000 years ago. Since then, Halley has returned to our skies, on average, once every 76 years. Halley's ellipse brings it from beyond the orbit of Neptune, when farthest from the Sun, to within the orbit of Venus, when closest to the Sun. At its last appearance, Halley moved through our skies like this, on its way to the Sun, late in 1985, and back out in early 86. Halley appeared in medieval skies when in 1066 the Normans conquered England, this from the Bayeux Tapestry. Halley was the star of Bethlehem in Giotto's fresco. He'd seen the comet in 1301. That comets are periodic in return was predicted by Edmund Halley. He saw the comet in 1682. Halley's comet, as it became, was first photographed on the return of 1910. And when it reappeared in the 80s, the space age had a welcome. An international armada headed for a rendezvous. Two probes were Russian, two Japanese, and one, named Giotto after the painter, European. Giotto flew closest of all, right through Halley's coma, the halo of gas and dust that vented from an icy nucleus, 16 kilometers by nine. In 1998, an American blast-off for another short-period comet. Just eight kilometers long and hewn like a bowling pin, this is Borelli's comet. Long-period comets, like Comet West, can be spectacular. Here's another, Hayakataki, and because of their long periods, they appear unexpectedly. Hail Bop, which surprised us in 1997, stole the show for months. From a nucleus 40 kilometers wide, Hale Bop spiraled gas and dust. To the right is the orbit of short period Halley. Compare it to the long period of Hale Bop, an orbit of thousands of years. Not a celestial paddlecraft, but a probe named Stardust whose job is just that, to collect interstellar dust. But its other task is to catch Comet Vild 2 and its emissions. With this collector, particles will be trapped and returned to Earth for analysis. The first consignment from a comet. Scientists will dissect matter predating the solar system, as well as comet grains from its birth. Another comet, another probe. The European craft Rosetta is to orbit the comet churyumov gerasimenko as it heads for the sun. America's deep impact will be equally bold. It's to launch an impactor towards the comet Temple One. The idea is to blast a crater the size of a stadium and see what's inside. As the oldest objects in the solar system, comets hold clues to its birth. Comets may have carried water to Earth and sparked life. Perhaps a hundred billion comets remain in the Oort cloud, all awaiting a tail-trailing tumble to the sun. <laughs>